Hi, my name is Sally Bemis, and I'm a Cali parent. I have a uh, son who's a sophomore, and my daughter just yesterday finished her first year of college. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. She's 
even done an analysis of my son. <laughs> she's watching his grades all the time, and she's looked at a star test and compares his grades with a star test, and then she'll say, you know, I think he could work a little harder here, you know, this is good. And, um, so I really appreciate the, the time that she takes to really look at all of her students and keep track of them. So, um, So we've been just really happy with the system. Um, it's not perfect, but um, it's just worked really well for our family. My name is Trish Davis. Um, I have a sophomore son, Malcolm, at Cali, and I have a daughter who graduated last year from Cali, um, who's finishing up her first year of college, and you'll see not quite finished yet, Sally. Um, and I also brought with me uh, Lindsay Black, who's a senior at Pally. Um I wanted to bring a couple of different perspectives. I think, you know, Lindsay's been through all four years of the Cali advisor system and has a different perspective, having um, just gone through the college application process and being accepted to go to Howard University. <laughs> is a little different. Um, we moved to Palo Alto from suburban Chicago in 2010. So my daughter, who's currently a freshman at USD, um, went to school three years in suburban Chicago and just one year at Pali. And I spoke to her earlier today to ask her to give me um, a little bit of insight as to what she saw as the differences between the traditional guidance counselor model that she um, was under at her old school, which is Adlai Stevenson High School um, in Lincolnshire, Illinois. Um, pretty similar a school to Palo Alto, except it's twice as large. So I always laugh when I hear people say, oh, Palo is a mega school. <laughs> um, Stevenson has 4,500 kids. And, um, but they managed to do quite well. Um, from my daughter's perspective, she she came in, she was a new student, so she was assigned an advisor her senior year, who was her calculus professor. Um, she said it worked well, he wrote her recommendations. There was a little, you know, getting to know you process because he hadn't been with her since sophomore year. Um, and I did end up having some of her former teachers from uh, Adley Stevenson write some of her, um, her college recommendations. But she said, by and large, it was much better than the experience she had at Stevenson. She had um, much more access to her advisor. Uh, they met um, a couple times a month. She was able to get all the information she needed about college, whereas at Stevenson, um, the model was more had a big assembly. And, and it would be you know, a huge assembly in, in, the, in the gymnasium, and they would talk to you about, you know, okay, you guys need to start, you know, planning to take your ACT and your SAT and so forth. There was no personal one-on-one uh, -on -one attention. So she really in, uh, thought that the model at Powell was a good model for her and more personalized and um, worked well. Um, as for me, I have been happy with um, the experience that I've had with uh, my son's teacher advisor, the way it's worked for us, uh, freshman year you're assigned an advisor, but sophomore year or the end of your freshman year, you're allowed to select um, an advisor for the remaining three years. And they encourage you to select a teacher that you know um, or have had some experience with because the goal is to foster that relationship and um, you know spend time and, and really have a good communication with, with this teacher who's going to be your advisor for the next three years. So, you know, my son, um, he, you know, he sort of, I'm not sure that he went about it the best way, but he selected his advisors. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, I'm saying, well, do you, how about this person? Do you know this person? No, I don't know that person. So, you know, so it just, you know, turned out he, he selected an English teacher and she, she wasn't his English. And I'm, he'll tell you, maybe he'll tell you why he chose her. I don't know. Maybe she is, maybe she is pretty. I don't know. I don't know why he's after her. 
<laughs> nice mom. Tired of seeing me all the time. But 
I every time I have a question, like I'll write it down, and I know that I can just go in and ask her because she's always so open, and she knows if she doesn't know certain things, she'll be like, oh, I'll go talk to one of the college counselors. My college counselor, Miss Chernibore at Pal at Pali. Um, so she'll go talk to her for me if I need her to do something, if I need her to figure something out. She is always there. Um, so we also, for college, we have to fill out a bunch of different forms, so sometimes it's a little overwhelming. And she did her best to try and explain the forms to us, but it, even if we had questions afterwards on how to uh, appropriately fill them out, she was always there to help us. We could stay after advisory, she didn't have to rush off anywhere, we could always ask her a question. And I just really approve of the teacher advisory system at Cali because it's very helpful for me um, in being where I am right now. I just finished my sophomore year at the University of Vermont. That was my mom and her dad. Uh, so they wanted me to come here today to talk to you guys a little bit about uh, my advisory uh, experience in high school. I started at Gunn, um, and I did two years at Gunn, and then um, I went to prep school. <laughs> and um, prep school was awesome. It was small, and we had um, our advisors, my advisory group. Consisted of Emma, Kayla, Sammy, um, me, and Vic. And Emma and Kayla were four year seniors. They were with um, Rebecca Jocelyn, our advisor, for all four years. I hopped in um, sophomore year, or after sophomore year, junior year, with uh, my friend Sammy. And um, then we picked up Vic because she didn't get along particularly with her advisor, so she joined our group. Um, we would meet like one to two days a week. Uh, I'd sit and talk about, I mean, it was a group of like pretty random bunch of girls, so we talk about that kind of stuff. We talk about um, how to reduce clicks in the school. Um, we talk about our college apps and uh, talk about problems we had with teachers or with other students. Um, and yeah, Rebecca Jocelyn was probably the reason I graduated high school and got to go to a four-year college. I Oh, a lot to her. Um, definitely great experience. I, I trusted in her fully. She drove me to the store when I needed ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> really, really, really helpful. Um, another advisor, she helped me um, kind of with talking to my college advisor, who was really helpful, really, really helpful as well. Um, the key is that the ratio between the college advisor and, and um, my uh, my advisor is like really small. You know, it was just us five, six girls, and her. And it was a good opportunity for her to meet me and write my um, college letter. And yeah, um, that was a big contrast to Gun, where I I don't remember my advisor's name. I'm not gonna lie, I don't even know what she looks like. I um, I met her probably twice um, in my two years there. I think that the first time I signed up for a few classes, um, we might have started a four-year plan, but really we only had like 15 minutes to meet, and then it was on to the next, so it was really not that helpful. Um, I remember getting really, really lost and confused for a lot of uh, my time at Gun, and kind of just slipped under, and um, I'm really lucky I got a chance to come back out and head out of Gun. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I strongly recommend this, this advisory system. Okay, and now for Deputy Thumb. I want to acknowledge, okay, we're running a little uh, behind schedule, and we want to have time to talk about the Q&A, so we'll be wrapping up the presentation shortly. Thank you. I, I can um, be short. Uh, I just want to say thank you for inviting me, and um, I think I'll continue some things um, that uh, Pastor Matt McDermott opened with, and I really appreciate that um, for setting the tone. And um, for Denise and Ken, and for, especially for the students and their parents who spoke. I, um, I, I do want to say, um, Again, my name is Becky Beacom. I'm the manager of health education at Palo Alto Medical Foundation. And I wanted to start just by explaining 
how I see my role here tonight. Um, it's well, it's true that I'm on multiple committees. You heard that uh, when we were introduced. I just want to make it clear that I'm here representing Palo Alto Medical Foundation in my role as a health educator. Um, I'm a member of many other committees, but I, I am not speaking for them tonight, so I need to make that clear. This slide um, speaks to me, and, um, and it also is a symbol of the work that we do and the role of healthcare and community work as well as schools. Our children, uh, what I hope you see, and what that says to me is that our children are surrounded uh, by spheres of influence. Uh, they are not just individuals that we teach, um, they are in context uh, of, of a greater community. If you think of the immediate circles around them, you can think of their peers and their family, their interpersonal relationships, the people that mean a lot to them. As you expand out, we, we look at organizations. The school is a huge community, and the way that it's structured can be very, very powerful in, um, in, a, in the influence that it exerts, and, and including health. Also, we have faith communities, or we have neighborhoods. Um, many of you have heard about developmental assets, and much of that is around these um, greater community and its effect. Beyond that, uh, sphere, you also have the greater community, the media, uh, other organizations, healthcare. Um, and even beyond that, you have policy and um, attitudes and norms in a community. The children exist in this community, and I do want to say, too, that my other role is to let you know that I am um, deeply committed to the role of community and working together on these kinds of issues. Palo Alto Medical Foundation, specifically um, in health education, we've had a very long history of collaborating with Palo Alto Unified. And in fact, I think it's worth, really worth emphasizing that um, our school district in Palo Alto has a, a very long history of partnering. It, 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 these are shared core values and guiding principles. If, um, if you step back and think about our schools and the partners that um, and many of you are here representing some of those partnerships, we have the police department, YCS, ACS, PTA Council, um, Palo Alto Medical Foundation, Packard Children's Hospital, I'm sure I'm forgetting um, many of those, the city of Palo Alto, the rec the rec program runs a number of their athletic programs, summer school, things like that. So, um, and that's unique. I, as you heard in my introduction, I also do work with some other schools and other school districts, and I think it's worthy of mentioning um, the role of partnering. Um, let's see. I think what I'd also like to say is, um, if we could switch to the next. Uh, this slide I chose, there's only two slides, and then we're going to move on to Q&A, but this slide actually is here to remind me of a couple of things. One is, this slide was used at the Youth Forum in 2010. And this is the Chinese, uh, so I've been told, the Chinese kanji for listening. And I'm going to try and point out some things here. I hope this cord is long enough. But this is the, Jap uh, the Chinese kanji for the word um, active listening. And over on the left, this symbol stands for ears. The upper right symbol represents the individual, and those are eyes. On the lower right, you see heart. The horizontal line is for attention. And this last symbol stands for mind. And when we listen to each other, um, we use all of those things, especially if we're actively listening and caring for each other. But um, we incorporate all of those things, the spirit, the mind, and our focused attention on listening to each other. And in that way, I mean, it serves as a symbol for me and a reminder of the promise that we made to young people um, at that youth forum to listen to them. We at that youth forum also heard um, ideas for structural change. Uh, the, the students weren't necessarily saying they were from Gun or Pali, nor were they saying that they um, wanted less rigor in their classes or that they wanted fewer tests. <laughs> what they did say um, was that they would like it organized better. 
so that they could actually navigate their years in a way that was less stressful and more productive. One of the um, partnerships I should have said too is Channel Success and um, formerly SOS with the school district. And structural change has been very much a part um, of, of that work. It's worth, I also think it's worth mentioning that quote at the bottom, which is listening is an attitude of the heart, a genuine desire to be with another which both attracts and heals. And um, I, I want to be sensitive to the gun community. Um, I, as a member of Project Safety Net and many other um, programs, um, I know that that's a community that's uh, suffered a great deal in recent years. And um, in the spirit of that, I, I really want to make sure that we are very supportive of them as we talk about um, these kinds of structural changes. Just get to my notes. We all have an opportunity. I think um, many of you probably have, have questions for Denise and, and for others about some of the process that's going on. Um, and maybe this is just the way to segue into those that Q and A portion um, to listen to each other and to listen in the way that we want to be listened to. Um, the community collaboration, I would just say, as we, before we start Q&A, um, is that we're at the beginning. I do have a long history of working with different um, projects in the district, and the, the biggest part is the beginning, and that's where we are right now, and I want to encourage everybody to think that our common ground, we have listened to the youth, they've been um, evaluated, we have reports, and I think that everybody is aligned in the desire to do something. I think the voices have spoken very loudly. And um, the other thing that we all share is we care about the same children. So uh, with that in mind, we go forward. And um, it was very helpful tonight to hear um, some very basic information about teacher advisory. And now I think what we'll do is open it up for, for questions. Thanks for listening to me. So where we are in the process right now is the district had 
um, uh, hired the consultant to put together the study, and that study was presented at the board meeting in March. <coughs> the action that the board took out of that was to ask the district to come back with a plan, and a plan will be presented at the board meeting in June. Um, as you know, uh, there's been a lot of uh, media coverage about what that plan will include. And I don't think the community has expressed in a clear voice how strongly we feel about having a teacher advisory. And I think the board needs community input in order to help them come to the conclusion that we've come to. That, you know, as you said, this is what a no-brainer. <laughs> So we need to do our part as parents in the community to talk to the board about what the next, what we would like to see as clear direction. They are our elected representatives, and we can take that step. Ken, do you have more to say? Yeah. I